9 o'clock, March the 24th, 2012, living every Saturday, 9 And here we are today, we're going to talk about sudden death. You know, sudden death causes, it's really something that affects every one of us and... You wake up one morning and your partner next to you does not move. It affects you for the rest of your life. Today is your time to calling. If you have an experience and where someone just died suddenly in your family. What do we mean by sudden death? One hour after initiation of your symptoms, the symptoms start, you die, you're gone. So no preparation was made and a lot of people experience this and we'll talk about the major causes and what can really put people in these type of predicament. They had no time for preparation. So 434-1771, 434-1790, 44-1791, you call us and let us know your experience so you can help somebody out there. We want to know how do you cope with sudden death. But before we get there, um, you guys may have read 1.58 seconds. I was one hell of a... A real good read, an easy read, a good book that I uh, um, I wrote about a year ago. But Switch, it's going to make it look like a small reading lesson. Switch is coming out probably in a couple of weeks, three weeks or so, sometime in May. And we can be launching it at uh, Cape Shepherd and also at Lime Grove. So it's going to be a beautiful, nice 324 pages of strong action. <laughs> you can't miss the stuff, so keep abreast. Now, let's, uh, dr.sparman at the sparmanclinic.com. You can just, don't forget, if you're in a marketplace or you had something to do today and you wanted to know about this program and listen to this program, you can go on this, go on YouTube and press Dr. Sparman YouTube. And what will happen, we, you, all of the programs are there and even surgery and anything you need to know about health. And it's all about living and we're trying to see how long we can live. Um, in doing that, you want to know about dying because if you know about dying, you'll be able to pre do things to prevent yourself from early death. But sometimes it comes sudden upon you. If your grandparent or your mom or your sister or brother is, uh, would have some type of terminal illness, and uh, you're prepared for it. You sit down, you bond with them, you say you love them, you hold their hands and you make preparations, you, uh, the will and all those things are discussed. You make peace and so forth with them. Uh, but basically, when it's sudden, sudden, nothing is done expected. Nothing is done. A lot of grieving is taking place. We'll talk about that today. So basically, the, the, the program really is, it's helping other people. I know a lot of people don't want to call in and talk about what happened. But yes, there may be pe people out there who, I, I tell you something, you can hold the stuff in and it becomes very traumatic. If you, if you talk to people about stuff, how do you deal with it? People can help. But one of the major causes of sudden death is cardiovascular problems, sudden heart attack. Um, you could be in your 30s or your 40s, and suddenly you get a sudden heart attack, and within an hour you're gone. Oh, I can't tell you, and I'll be going to talk about some of the grieving and the anger and the emotions that are expressed in these people. I've got a caller. Let me just take that. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, ma'am. How can All I right. help you? Yes. T yes. Tell us your experience today. Yes. I want to find out if you have acid reflux, if that can also cause, if that does cause your nose on the head to get stuffy every night. Yeah, I, I'll answer that. Yeah, you know, if you get acid flux, a lot of things can happen, you know. You can get a lot of times acid, especially if you're laying on a uh, flat and you don't have many pillows. People uh -huh. who've got acid reflux, uh, it's recommended that they sleep with their head elevated in an angle. Two, uh -huh. three pillows and so yeah. forth so that the acid does not come up. But a lot of times it comes up into the throat uh -huh. and the epiglottics and all those uh, small little organs there uh -huh. in the throat area. And it would cause a lot of irritation, and people could get sensations that would be in the sinuses, which is really in the head. And it causes so, noise to block up. Oh, yes, it can. It can. But most times when that happens, it has to do with sinuses oh. and, 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 and so forth. But acid reflux normally is not a common cause of blocking of your nose, okay. but a lot of throat irritations and so forth. Thank you for calling, ma'am. 
So we're uh, morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm calling to ask a question. Yeah, please do. Um, I'm calling to know about uh, cholesterol. Okay. What do you want to know about cholesterol? Well, my cholesterol, your bad cholesterol is very high, so I'm just calling to ask a question. Can you please turn on your radio immediately, ma'am? Yeah, well, uh, cholesterol in itself, uh, we're talking about sudden death uh, and cholesterol is one of the nidus, or one of the culprits involved. And I remember I said the number one cause of sudden death, dying within one hour of your symptoms. Heart related, heart attacks, and the heart goes into these fast rhythms called ventricular fibrillation, sometimes refractory to any type of therapy. So, but what cholesterol in itself causes clogging up of your arteries, and arteries clogged up, if your cholesterol is high, it'll, it'll, it'll clog up these arteries around the heart and the brain and so forth, and that would expose you to heart attacks and you can have sudden death. But cholesterol in itself is a common enemy to the body, so we always encourage patients to try to keep your cholesterol down. So exercise and watch your diet and so forth. And I thank you for calling. Okay. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Dr. Farmer. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, I called to talk about the sudden death of my husband. Yes, I want to hear. Please, share yes. with us. He used to do security work, and he worked at night. Okay. So usually I would talk to him before he goes to bed. Okay. And I spoke to him about 12 o'clock the night. Mm. And then in the morning when I was... He didn't complain of anything. Okay. And in the morning when I was looking for him to come home, he didn't come. Okay. So I called his cell phone about six times, and the landline where he works about six times, and I didn't hear him. Mm -hmm. So then I told the neighbor we'd like to go and um, see if something is wrong. Right. But I had a feeling something was wrong, because I know he would usually call me about six o'clock in the morning. Okay. So before I stepped out of the door, I said, Lord, prepare me for what I'm going to face today. And then I got to the workplace. Yeah. And I saw the policeman with gloves on and mask. Mm. And I said, I said to the driver, I said, what's this today? And when I got there, I saw him laying on his face. And um, the the policeman said, are you late? I said, yes, I'm his voice. And he said, all right. You know, from then, well, you, you could imagine what happened. I know, but let's let's go back. I'm so glad that you're sharing this because many people out there would not want him to speak about it. But mm -hmm. I know you have done some healing and all of those things. Yes. And you will help a lot of people in this country here today and across the Caribbean. Yes. I, but let I, me go back. When you, what were you, what made you think that something really had happened uh, when you were driving to go to this place? I know he's got a norm of calling you. He didn't answer his phone. Why didn't you think it could be that his phone was dead or something? Because I know that if... Um well, the landlord, the cell phone was ringing. I know that if something had happened, he would have called me and said that I'm going to be late. Got you. You know, I'm going to be late. You so that's why I suspected something was wrong, you know. So yeah, but I had the support of my church family. Oh, yeah, but even before we go there, mm -hmm. let's go now and see. When you saw him, what mm -hmm. emotions did you feel? What did you feel? Tell us I, about it. I can't even explain how I felt, but... I know he brought down with tears and everything else, you know, and I, I, you know, I couldn't believe what he was seeing, you know. Were you, were you able t to look at him and touch him or no? Well, I did touch him, but the police told, told the driver of the car, mm. said, let her sit and when she finished crying, you know, then let her come okay. and, and see him. See so it. then he told me his nose was bleeding, maybe like, then he fell, he yeah. went forward, yeah. and hit his nose, so it was full of blood, oh, so boy. the policeman told me all of that, so, and then he turned him over on his face, then it was finished, you know, and he told me, come and see him now, I went and I saw him, you know, so you could imagine. Did you yeah. believe, or did you, were you in disbelief? Well, did you believe that he really was dead, or you were telling yourself, no, maybe he isn't? Well, no, I, well, when I said so, I had believe it, because when I got there, I said to the policeman, well, he died, the policeman said, sorry, ma'am, but it is so, you know. So then, it, you know, it kind of sank in that, you know, it was so. Mm, 
So tell me what happened now. You had to go home. Tell me how you dealt with the first day. Let's know what you did. How did you deal? I know you. I know you're religious and you're a Christian. But tell me. I mean, you're a human being. What did you do? How did you deal with this stuff? You know, he's not coming back home. Tell me. For days, I could not believe. You know that he was dead. You know, but then all the prayer and everything I got and the support from my relatives and my friends and his friends. I said, well, you know, MD, I have to look after the arrangements, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I called my daughter, who lives overseas. Okay. Uh, Cupid knows what I'm talking about, too. Okay. And I called my son. My son came to the spa. So from then, then, um, you know, when I came home, then the phone was ringing off the hook. But then it was on the radio and the news how the security guard was found day. Mm -hmm. So everybody, they heard the name, the name was announced. Okay. So everybody was calling. So by the time I pushed the key in the door, everybody was calling me. How so many? Then, it, then they said to me, oh, I'm coming over. Uh -huh. So I, by 12 o'clock, my house was full. 12 o'clock the day, yeah. my house was full. So you had good support, and that helped, didn't it? Yes, very much so. Very much so. many words of comfort. And who could not get to the house call, you know, I offered a word of prayer, and that was, you know, quite a relief. And then my relatives from overseas, they called, mm -hmm. and it was so comforting, you know. It was really comforting. How many years ago was that? This, almost three years ago. June is going to be three years. Three years. Yes. How do you feel today? Well, I would say I feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. But one thing I must tell you. Yes. Each day I remember him. Because it was when he died, it was 35 years of marriage. Oh. And I'm telling you, I remember the good times we had. Because we didn't have any rough times. It was good from the go. So, you know, each day I remember him. You know, especially when I want to get from point A to point B. Yeah. You know, I would say, but if my husband was alive, I know he'd be ready to take me. You know? I used to remember him, but I remember the good times we had. And all the times we had together were good times. Well, courtship breakthrough. I, uh, I admire your strength, and I thank you for calling. What encouragement would you give to, to people like you out there who suddenly experience the sudden death of their loved one? What would you tell them? Well, first thing you have to realize, it is already done. You cannot bring him back. You cry. And after you cry, then you come to terms with what has happened. And pray. Don't expect somebody to pray for you and you don't do any prayer. Mm. You pray for yourself. Good. And along with anybody call you and, you know, ask you if you would like a word of prayer. Don't refuse it. Take it. Thank All you. of those things help. Thank you so much for calling and God bless you. Continue to look forward and keep praying. And I know that the Lord will give you more strength to even every day would be better for you. Thank, uh, thank you for calling and I appreciate it. Have a nice much. day. I will, let's take the next caller. Good morning. Yeah, pleasure. Good morning to Dr. Sparman. Morning, how are you? I'm good, thanks. So what about yourself? Not bad. What do you have to share with us today? I will let you know what causes to it and if you have any of ten years that you're having a stroke. Oh, good. Okay, you could you could look you could put on a lesson. Basically, All right. st stroke stroke is also one of the things that can cause sudden death, clogging up of those arteries. And thank you for calling. Apart from heart attack, you can have a massive stroke, and boom, you go. It can happen within one hour. You can if you most times though, if you got high blood pressure, pressure problems. You are predisposed to strokes, so it's very important for you to watch your salt, cut back in your salt. It's very important for you to keep your pressure controlled. And if concomitantly you have things like diabetes and high blood pressure, you can get a stroke. People with sickle cell disease, people with lupus, all these people are predisposed to stroke. And stress, but high blood pressure and you got stress, 
it can cause stroke. And the thing is about strokes is that when it happens, it's hard to reverse it. Uh, I want to, even at this point, to uh, mention to people, if you find that you have any symptoms that's consistent with a stroke or so forth, a numbness in your hand, weakness in the hand, uh, uh, asymmetry of your face, and so forth, get to the hospital. Call the ambulance right away. If we get you within three hours, I can give you medicines to reverse that stuff and put you back normal again. But thank you for calling. I'm going to be right back. I know we got a few callers, but please hold on. This program might go into two weeks. Uh, I'm not going to rush it. I got a song coming through right now. And let's just go on with uh, Buju Banton, Destiny. Um, as a matter of fact, let's go for Kiss and Say Goodbye, the Manhattans. This has got to be the saddest day of my life. I called you here today. Many of us don't get a chance to say goodbye. <laughs> Can't say I love you. Can't get him make to, to close the gap. You've done wrong to your loved ones. You couldn't even mend it. That caused a lot of grieving. Kissing and say goodbye. Important. We'll talk about it when we come back. Yeah, so that's it what caused the feelings of uh, bewilderment and anxiety and self-reproach and uh, depression. And an inability uh, to continue a normal life. Because you had no time to prepare. No time to say I love you. No time to say goodbye. This sudden death. And I tell you that is why you have a loved one. Tell them you love them every day. Tell them you care. If you have a problem with mommy or daddy and you disagree. You're an adult and you disagree in certain type of things. Don't stay a year without saying hi mommy because you're angry. Mom, we have differences, Mommy. Daddy, we, we, we disagree. But please, let's agree to disagree. And I love you very much. I'm thinking about you. You know what? When you do, don't do these things, that's when you grieve. And forever, some people can't even move on. All right, we'll take a caller. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Sparman. Good morning. I would like to know... At what point is it necessary to apply a nitroglycerin patch to the heart? What uh, stage is the patient in? All right. Thank you. Uh, no, we, we talked about sudden death. We said that one of the most causes, uh, common causes, or uh, major causes of sudden death is cardiovascular problem. Heart attacks, sudden, gone, or stroke. Uh, I want you to be cautious because what happens, a lot of patients, I'm coming to your question, a lot of patients, what they do, or a lot of family members, because remember the sudden death mostly affect the people living after. Uh, you see your mom or dad taking a while to walk up the stairs. They're panting for breath, and, and you don't, and these are signs you're getting that something is happening, and you don't know, and you let it go because you're not medically inclined. When you see these things happening, they're talking to you on the phone and they're breathing heavily, or they're walking and they have to stop and so forth. You know something is happening. They could have, could be having some type of blocked arteries or big and large heart and so forth. So these patients, a lot of them, if you, if they take them to the doctor, the doctor would, you know, introduce you to things called nitroglycerin, which is a nice, uh, patch or sometimes something under the tongue that normally would increase the blood flow to the heart so the heart can pump better. So normally nitroglycerin would, uh, the patch is applied there, uh, to increase the blood flow to the heart, but you have to be diagnosed with blocked arteries or coronary artery disease before you use them. Be careful when you use them. Only advised by your cardiologist because it can cause you to die suddenly because if your blood pressure drops suddenly using nitroglycerin you can die suddenly so it's a drug should be used under the tongue or on the chest wall it doesn't matter don't use it except it's prescribed by your cardiologist thank you so so this sudden death story i'm gonna just give you a few we're gonna have this program again but i i really am thankful for that person who call and give her experience because it helps people we all we all will at one time or the other be faced with something like this and it's not it's traumatic just looking at someone that went away you weren't prepared for the stuff what do you do how do you move on so as i said before while you're with them show them love remember 
that you don't have to be 65 and 90 to die suddenly. People, people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, thick hearts. They can, you got high blood pressure and your heart got thickened. These things called arrhythmia. You can, it's heart can it's a ventricular fibrillation and you die also suddenly. We got to call it a cure on Saturday? Yes. Yeah, so, so basically, that's what it is. We will talk about this when we come back the next thing. Don't forget that you could uh, 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 visit me at dr.sparman, the sparmaclinic.com, and you can go on YouTube, Dr. Sparman on YouTube, and you can get these programs where you can learn uh, about what you can do. I know a lot of times what happens is that people, uh, normal people panic when this thing happens and then they, 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 they keep feeling guilty because they could have done so many things to probably help. But you can't blame yourself. But what you need to do, you need to really at least, uh, uh, while you're alive and while your loved ones are alive, you know, enjoy them. Enjoys them. You see, it's different when you have a terminal uh, cancer and you know every day you can come in. Mommy's prepared. Uh, she's ready to go. You talk. You bring. You made amendments. Peace. Forgiveness. All those things are done. Sudden death is a different story. I want you guys to keep tuned in uh, every Saturday from 9 to 9.30 uh, uh, to this program called Living. Uh, we've been in the air at least for uh, one year plus, and we have a great deal of listeners out there. I want to thank you all for listening, taking your time off in the morning and listening to Dr. Sparman as I feed you with food of thought so you can live and live. Forever. Now, Buju uh, <laughs> destiny. The question is, are you, is your destiny to die early? You die at 23. Is it your destiny? I don't know. It's, it's a topic. It's a topic uh, that you, uh, yeah, it's a topic that you normally would basically, uh, we could talk about that. We could debate in that if you were destined for that. But I think that lifestyle modification, um, lifestyle modification and so forth is basically what you need to, uh, it can prevent uh, you from um, dying early. Uh, you watch what you eat, uh, you keep your pressure, your cholesterol, your diabetes, all these things down, and you would see uh, how much you can prolong your life. Here, living to li listening to living is about prolonging your life and living as long as you can. I want to talk. Thank you for listening and tomorrow i um, mean next week actually at nine o'clock every saturday 99 30 vob we deal with life diseases buju banton destiny is dying sudden destiny i'll see you next week